Hello friends, my name is Amit and today we're going to talk about one of the most dreaded topic which is mutual funds. And what we're going to cover today is the basics of it, the very very basics of it. We'll try to make it very simple to understand what are the various nuances of mutual fund. We will try to cover it in language that anyone can understand it very easily. The topics that we're going to cover today is what is a mutual fund, why mutual fund, risk associated with a mutual fund, what are the different types, different categories, what is an SIP and what is actually inside a mutual fund. But before we go to the mutual fund, let's try to understand how does a bank work. So if you have a bank and you have got some money in your pocket, you can go and deposit that money in the bank. Like you, there are other people who can deposit their money in the bank. The bank takes this money and what it does is it loans out this money to different people. This loaned out money can be used for the purposes of home loans, can be used for vehicle loans, can be used for working capital of businesses and so on and so forth. Now, when these people return back this money to the bank, the bank distributes it to the individuals, including you. While doing so, the bank also earns what is called as an interest from these individuals and again distributes this interest to each one of you. In the process, the bank earns a little profit for itself, which can be called as a fees, which can be called as an earning or whatever name you want to keep it, but the bank needs it to function properly. Similar to this, what a mutual fund does is that you put your money in a mutual fund house and similar to you, there are like-minded people who will put their money into a mutual fund house. The mutual fund house then invest this money into various securities. These can be equity, these can be treasury bills, these can be certificate deposits and so on and so forth, depending on what kind of a mutual fund it is. When the mutual fund house receives these earnings from these various instruments, either in terms of the share appreciation prices, or in terms of the interest on the various bills or certificate of deposits, it distributes back the same to the various individuals. And similar to what we saw in the case of banks, there is also a profit associated that is received in case there is one and the same also is distributed among the people. While doing so, mutual fund earns what it calls is as a expense ratio. This expense ratio is the fees that mutual fund is charging to maintain all the expenses while doing all of these different type of transactions. Now with that basic being cleared, let's try to understand why mutual funds. So if you are an individual and you want to buy some kind of securities with limited amount of money, you can only put your money either into stocks, shares, or you can put your money into debts, instruments, or any alternate investment. Your risk in these case is usually higher. The volatility of investment is higher and the prospect of returns can be high or low depending upon what segment you are getting invested in. Now, if along with you, there are many other people who are putting their money in, you get a big chunk of money and you can use all of that money to pool in and buy different kind of instruments in one go. So you can use that money to buy shares, to buy debt instruments, to put in alternate investments and every one of you will get a share of all of these instruments. In such case, the risk comes down, the volatility comes down and the prospect of returns are relatively higher. Now coming to the topic of risks associated with a mutual fund. Now the most famous dialogue on earth today is the mutual funds are subject to market risks. Please read all scheme related documents carefully before investing. Now the thing that we need to understand is what is a risk? and what are the various things that you should be considering when we talk about risks associated with a mutual fund. So let's have a look at the risk associated with the day-to-day -day transactions that we undertake. Even in case of the money being invested in the bank, you are only covered by something which is called as a deposit insurance. Now the maximum deposit amount that is insured for the money that you have put in the bank is only limited to 5 lakh rupees. So that means if you have put your savings or if you are invested in a fixed deposit or recurring deposit in a bank, you are only covered until 5 lakh rupees by the insurance for the money that you have put in bank. Now this is what you consider as the safest investment. There are risks associated with that as well. 
Also, in the recent times, you would have seen that many of the banks would have come to the brink where people were not able to withdraw the money that they had deposited in the bank. So that means that the risks is associated with each and every transaction that you do in your daily lives. Now, similarly, the mutual funds are also prone to these various market risks, but different categories of mutual funds are exposed to different categories of risk. Each information document provided by mutual fund does carry a risk rating, but is uh, put against a risk meter and you can take a decision basis your risk appetite as to which mutual fund do you want to invest into. Now let's go and have a look at what are the different categories of mutual fund. So the, broadly, there are five categories of mutual fund as per SEBI. These are equity, debt, hybrid, solution oriented and other schemes. When we talk about equity mutual funds, these are divided into large cap, mid cap, large and mid, small and so on and so forth. Now, basis the market capitalization, the companies have been divided into large cap, mid cap and small cap. The companies which are from first to hundredth by terms of market capitalization are termed as large cap companies. The companies which are from 101 to 250th are termed as mid cap companies and 250th onwards by market capitalization are termed as small cap companies. Besides this, the fund may also choose to have sectoral or thematic investments done, for example, doing it in the financial institutions, doing it in the technology institutions, doing it in the pharma companies. These kind of mutual funds are called equity mutual funds. When we talk about debt funds, these are funds where most of the investment are done in the debt instruments. Example of debt instruments are certificate of deposit, debentures, treasury bills, etc. Talking about further hybrid kind of mutual funds are ones where the investments are done both in equity and debt and maybe in some other asset quality as well. For example, a balanced hybrid fund is one where you would have equity and debt exposure more or less equal, whereas an aggressive hybrid fund will be the one where it will have more equity exposure than a debt one. The other type of mutual fund that we have is the solution oriented mutual funds, which is where we have retirement fund and children's fund, which typically have a lock-in period of five years. And then we have other category of mutual funds, which are index funds, for example, mutual funds investing in Sensex and Nifty indexes and fund of funds. Now let's come to the terminology that is most commonly associated with the mutual fund, which is SIP. What is an SIP? Now the full form of SIP, as you may already be aware, is systematic investment plan. Systematic investment means that you're putting in your investment as per a system. Now, what is that system or what can be the system? Let's just have a look at it. Let's say on 5th of every month, you put a thousand rupees worth of investment in some instrument. That can be a recurring deposit, that can be a post office deposit, or that can be a mutual fund. Since you are doing this on 5th of every month, that means there is a system in place. You're doing an investment of 1000. So that's the investment that we are talking about. So this will be called a systematic investment plan. If you are putting it in the RD, it will be called the recurring deposit. If you are putting it in the post office, it will be the post office deposit. And if you are putting in the mutual fund, it's a mutual fund investment. But broadly, it's a very simple concept of putting the money on a recurring basis. Now, when you are investing via mutual funds, you can have a daily investment, weekly investment, monthly, quarterly, semi-annually, depending upon what are the different features that mutual fund is offering. This is again, to simplify things, similar to how you would invest in a recurring deposit, either in a bank or in a post office deposits. Now, let's take a moment to understand one of the most important aspects of a mutual fund, which is what does a mutual fund constitutes of and what are the various things that one should keep in mind when making the first time investments. So we'll have a look at the mutual fund fact sheet and try to figure out what are the things that you should be keeping in mind as a layman. So here I'm going to have a look at one of the equity mutual funds and one of the debt mutual funds. But you can get the fact sheets of any mutual fund easily available on the mutual fund website. And I strongly recommend that you go through it before you put money in a mutual fund. So let's have a look at how does it look like and what are the different things that you should be making a note of. So at the top, it says it's a long-term equity fund and it gives this 
particular information saying it is suitable for investments who can remain invested for minimum of five years. The reason for that is the volatility of equity is higher in the short term term and as the time grows, the volatility decreases considerably. When you see over here the type of scheme it says is multi cap fund. So it is investing across large cap, mid cap and small cap stocks. The very first thing that one should try to see is the name of the fund manager or the overall experience of the fund manager. Now when you are investing your money, it is good to see that who will be the person who is managing your money. You can always Google the name of the person or go on LinkedIn and try to find the credentials and see what is the experience of the fund manager and what are the different funds that he has managed in the past. The next thing that we see is the asset center management. This is the total corpus that the fund house is managing for this particular mutual fund. Then you have the net asset value, which we will cover in one of the next videos and weighted average expense ratio. So as we learned earlier, this is what this mutual fund is charging for managing the fund for you. You can see clearly it says regular plan has got 2.05% of expense ratio and direct plan has got 1.02%. Again, we'll cover this in one of our future videos saying why we have this difference and which is the one that you should be choosing. Next, it has mentioned that benchmark index is Nifty 500 TRI. This, so the fund will be showing its progress, whether positive, negative or how it is faring against this particular benchmark. The important thing is now on the right side where it says portfolio disclosure. So this is where it tells you what are the different instruments where this particular fund is investing. For example, in this case, this particular mutual fund has invested in all of these different industries, software, finance, banks, consumer durables. And similarly, it has also made some overseas investments. Besides this, it also has put some six to 7% of its investment into the debt funds. On the left hand side over here, you can see the industry allocation, how your fund has been uh, invested. And you can clearly see that the diversification has been there with majority of the investment being in the software or the IT companies, followed by finance and consumer non-durables. Now we'll have a look at one of the debt funds. So we have a liquid fund over here, which is a debt fund. And again, we see what is the experience of the fund manager. We see the asset under management is this and the weighted average expense ratio is considerably less than what is there for the equity mutual fund. The benchmark index in this case is Crystal Liquid Fund Index. And as you can see on the right side that it has invested a lot of its money in treasury bill. It has also invested some of its money in the government securities and then into some fixed deposit schemes. If we see the asset allocation by asset class, we can see that majority of the investment is in the treasury bills followed by investment in government securities and then by other instruments such as fixed deposits. So just to summarize what we have covered today, what is a mutual fund? Why we need to invest in a mutual fund? The risk associated with the same, different types and categories of mutual fund, definition of SAP, and we had a look at what is inside a mutual fund. If you have any questions related to this video, please let us know in the comment section below. Like this video, subscribe to our channel, and share this with your friends and family. Thank you and have a great day.